Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everyone welcome to the course on medical biomaterials we will continue on the topic of uh, biofilms Biofilms as I said is the most serious uh, issue uh, in the area of uh, biomaterial implants devices. Most of the biomaterials or implants fail because of uh, formation of biofilms um, and uh, which reduces the life of uh, implants or even devices. Now what is this biofilm? It is a population of uh, microorganisms concentrated at a surface okay, and it is surrounded by extracellular polymeric substance. So, there is a matrix that is formed which sort of protects these uh, bacteria um, and thereby uh, they survive for a longer time. They are able to uh, prevent uh, uh, getting killed by the antibiotics. So, some of them even develop antibiotic resistance and so on. So, this biofilm may contain live or dead cells, it will contain proteins, it will contain sugars, polysaccharides, metabolites, uh, even quorum sensing signaling molecules. So, most of the um, gram positive, gram negative bacteria form biofilms in various parts of uh, implants. It could be a dental uh, implant, it could be a cardiovascular stent, it could be a ureteral stent, it could be a um, orthopedic uh, material and so on. So, E. coli, Pseudomonas, Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus epidermis, Proteus mirabilis, Klebsiella, Enterococcus, Streptococcus. So many different types of organisms that can form a, a biofilm. Okay, um, there is something called persisters. These are cells, bacteria, uh, which are in biofilm, and they start remaining for a longer time. They become persistent. Okay, that is a small subpopulation of bacterial cells that will be dormant. So they become extremely tolerant to antibiotics. So they. they acquire this antibiotic resistance hence they persist in the biofilm. Okay. So, these are a phenotype expressed by almost all the bacteria including major pathogens. This can lead to chronic and relapsing inf infection. Okay. So, uh, because the biomaterial has been placed some bacteria survive for a longer time um, and they became immune to antibiotics also that is persister cells. They can tolerate high doses of bactericidal antibiotics. Okay. A small fraction of bacterial population responds and others form resistance or tolerance towards these antimicrobial agents. Okay. So, why do they become? They change their phenotype, um, there is an exopolysaccharide matrix that is formed on the surface. It prevents the diffusion of uh, uh, the um, antibiotics right to the bottom of the biofilm. So, many reasons happen. Okay. We will talk about some of those reasons as we go down the uh, class. So, why do they get antibiotic resistance? Okay? This is called biofilm associated antibiotic resistance. There are many factors which, have, which lead them to have bacterial resistance. For example, the presence of exopolysaccharides and glycocalyx. Okay? This glycolyx is nothing but is a glycoprotein polysaccharide covering that surrounds the cell membranes of some bacteria okay? and uh, even cells. This is nothing but strands of sugars and proteins brown together. So, it prevents um, the diffusion of uh, the antibiotics. Okay. There are enzymes which are produced by the bacteria and they are called antibiotic degrading enzymes. So, these enzymes as soon as uh, the um, antibiotic is released into the system, they come and degrade the antibiotics. So, the antibiotics are no more effective. There are extracellular DNA which also affects uh, which leads to antibiotic resistance. There are something called efflux pumps. Many bacteria possess this particular um, protein called efflux pump and these pumps out whatever um, foreign material that enters the bacteria. It could be an antimicrobial agent, it could be an antibiotic, it could be a dye, it could be a toxic chemical. So, these efflux pumps throw them out thereby it uh, prevents the um, killing of the bacteria. Quorum sensing, 
many bacterial species uh, release a chemical called uh, a quorum sensing molecule, it is a metabolite um, just to inform each other that uh, there is a certain cell population density. Okay. Quorum sensing helps in the biofilm formation, basically quorum sensing molecules help the bacterial population that means it has reached a threshold population and they can form a colony. Okay. So, all these factors have an influence on the bacterial uh, species gaining antibiotic resistance and we will look at each one of them little bit and uh, this leads to uh, biofilm associated infection also in uh, um, biomaterial. So, the, the factors that affect bacterial resistance we can group it into biochemical factors, we can call it molecular mechanism, we can call it altered host factors. Biochemical factors like I mentioned exopolysaccharides that are produced, antibiotic degrading enzymes that are produced extracellular DNA, efflux pumps, quorum sensing. If you look at molecular mechanism, there could be a gene transfer, lateral gene transfer or horizontal gene transfer. Sometimes the bacteria um, as soon as they settle on the surface mutates, okay. all these can lead into um, resistance, antibiotic resistance. The third could be altered host factors because the antibiotics uh, could be under sub MIC concentration. Like I said uh, uh, the antibiotic has to diffuse through the biofilm matrix. So, the concentration of antibiotics in the in interiors of the biofilm could be sub MIC. Oxidative stress, the oxygen diffusion also is hindered uh, in the biofilm because of the presence of the EPS. So, many of the um, bacteria can be undergoing oxidative stress. SOS response, chemical signals toxin antitoxin modules that are produced, nutrients, amount of nutrients available inside the biofilm could be much less. So, they are under starvation condition, temperature may be affecting, pH may be affecting, even the cell density and finally, the osmolarity. So, all these are called the host factors which may influence um, the bacteria uh, to gain resistance okay, in the biofilm. So, one needs to understand all these factors and uh, hence design um, surfaces which can prevent uh, biofilm formation as well as which will uh, eradicate uh, persistent uh, cells. So, let us look at uh, some of these factors, the drug efflux pumps, like I said these are uh, uh, large proteins um, which throws out whatever foreign material is inside. Okay. So, they pump out of the cell, mostly they are found in gram negative bacteria. Uh, they ally help the microorganism to regulate their internal environment by removing toxic substances. It could be antimicrobial agents, metabolites, whatever it is, you know, these are called efflux pumps. Um, there are many families of efflux pumps, you do not have to get uh, very worried about uh, uh, these uh, biological names, but uh, you have to understand there are many families of efflux pumps. So, Sometimes uh, uh, in the drug discovery, if they dis decide to design molecules for one cert family of efflux pump inhibitor, you could have several efflux pump uh, families which you need to. One is called the ATP binding acid super family, other is called major facilitator super family. There is a multi drug and toxic compound extrusion family, small multi drug resistance family, resistance nodulation division super family drug metabolite transporter superfamily. So, uh, even the metabolites that are formed when the drug is introduced, there are efflux pumps which can throw it out. So, a large number of families um, are there, uh, these are called efflux pump families which throw out any foreign metabolite that is present inside the bacteria. If you look at E. coli, uh, E. coli has very, uh, very well developed efflux pumps. Uh, this is a particular system. ACR, AB, TO, LC. This is a protein which consists of inner membrane transporter, a periplasmic membrane fusion protein and an outer membrane channel. So, um, in the E. coli these transporters right from the inside of the microorganism, um, they can throw the uh, metabolite right outside into the extracellular. These are best characterized efflux pumps in E. coli and has been found to be overexpressed especially in clinical isolates because clinical isolates um, develop a lot of uh, drug resistance. The pump can export uh, as you can see 
antibiotics like chloromethaphenicol, fluoroquinoline, fusidic acid, rifampicin, tetracycline, ethidium bromide, boiled salts, SDS, surfactants like SDS, dyes, detergents, disinfectants, solvents, antibiotics, large number of uh, com compounds can be thrown out by um, the uh, this particular family. This family encodes genes found to be upregulated under growth in biofilms and exposure to several antibiotics. So, um, in the biofilm as well as uh, when the E. coli is exposed to antibiotics, um, these uh, genes which encode this particular efflux pumps get upregulated. So, they are very, very active and they are found in especially in clinical isolates. So, there are efflux pumps inhibitors, okay. Um, they are substances that inhibit the f uh, flux of substances mediated by efflux pump. So, what we do is if you have a flux pump inhibitor, it can go and bind to those proteins and make the efflux pumps inactive. Then uh, the bacteria becomes uh, um, okay, under uh, any antibiotic, it can be easily treated under any antibiotic and they become very sensitive to those antibiotics. So, um, one strategy of dealing this type of resistance is you give the efflux pump inhibitor as well as uh, you give uh, the um, antibiotic as well. So, there are many inhibitors uh, thyrodazine and then PA beta N. These inhibitors could be used as enhancers of the antibiotics in the treatment of biofilm. Okay. So, for example, uh, this particular compound um, contains this type of heterocycle with nitrogens and sulfur. Um, this is a compound which has got a, um, arginine, naphthalamide here, you can see this. Okay. So, in addition to giving antibiotic, you can also give these uh, one of these efflux pumps inhibitors, so that uh, uh, the biofilm um, can be eradicated. The next important uh, um, activity in the bacterial biofilm is the quorum sensing. Now, this quorum sensing plays a very important role in the development of bio biofilm. So, what is this quorum sensing? Um, when the bacterial population is very, very small and as the population keeps increasing, they start um, uh, releasing a metabolite that is called a quorum sensing molecule. Okay. And uh, when the concentration of this quorum sensing uh, molecule increases, then the bacteria also realizes that their population has reached a threshold value and they start forming a biofilm on a surface. So, quorum sensing is almost like a signaling and uh, the signaling helps uh, for these uh, bacteria to change their phenotype from the sessile form to the fixed form. Okay, so, there is a lot of changes that happen as soon as they start settling down and form biofilm. So, there is a very strong connection between quorum sensing, signaling and the biofilm formation. Okay. This is almost like a social behavior um, of the bacteria. So, this quorum sensing is a cell to cell signaling and this is controlled expression of specific genes in response to these extracellular chemical signals produced by bacteria themselves. Okay. And also the flex systems have been implicated in quorum sensing regulation. So, the quorum sensing uh, not only changes the phenotype of the bacteria from the sessile or motile form into fixed um, or uh, biofilm forming form, but it also affects the flex pumps. It also controls the expression of number of virulent factors as well as biofilm differentiation. Okay. So, there are three classes of quorum sensing systems have been uh, reported actually. Okay. The first one is related to gram negative bacteria. There, is, there are two proteins Lux and Lux I and Lux R. These are quorum sensing in gram negative bacteria and um, the quorum sensing signaling molecule is called acyl homoserine lactones. This is the structure of this acyl homoserine lactones. Okay. So, there are a lot of these type of functional groups. Okay. This lactone ring is there and there could be longer chains. So, you can have uh, hydrophobic um, molecules are very short hydrophilic. These are all called signaling molecules. These are produced by the gram negative bacteria okay. uh, and at certain threshold concentration uh, the, the phenotype of these bacteria changes because they realize their population density has reached a threshold value. Um, if you look at gram positive bacteria, okay, 
they produced some oligopeptides. These are two component type quorum sensing in gram positive bacteria. These are small peptides um, equivalent to these AHL a signaling molecule produced by gram negative, uh, gram positive produced small oligopeptides. Then we also have LUX S, yes, these are encoded auto inducer 2 quorum sensing in both gram negative and gram positive bacteria. Okay. So, uh, predominantly gram negative produces this uh, um, acyl homoserine lactones, uh, gram positives produce this the oligopeptide. So, most of the uh, percentage of bacteria is covered by these and of course, we also have some LUX S which is produced, it is an auto inducer produced by both the gram negative and gram positive. Okay, let us look at how these LUX uh, I and LUX R uh, type of current sensing in gram negative happen. So, LUX I like protein is an auto inducer synthase that catalyzes the formation of a specific acyl homoserine lactone. Okay. So, the AHL is produced, okay, it goes to the extracellular space. Um, so, at low concentrations, the AHL gets dispersed, it diffuses freely through the cell membrane at, at high cell density. So, at high cell density, they come back again and they bind to the LUXR. The LUXR is a transcriptional regulator that binds to the diffusing AHL back and in turn activates the transcription of its target genes. Okay. So, at low cell density, uh, AHL although is produced it diffuses out into the extracellular space and lost. But at high cell density, the concentration of AHL is so much, some of it diffuses back and binds to LUX R, which leads as soon as they bind, this leads to a lot of transcriptional uh, regulation that happens, like uh, moving of the bacteria from sessile to um, fixed or biofilm forming form, uh, production of virulent factors activation of efflux pumps and so on actually. So, in um, gram negative bacteria this LUXI, LUXR play a very important role and uh, the AHL, uh, the signaling molecule gets diffused out and then again it comes back and binds to the LUXR. Okay. This is how um, the action of uh, AHL happens in gram negative bacteria. Okay. What are the other biochemical factors which lead to bacterial resistance? Okay. You have the exopolysaccharides and glycocalax. These are sugars and protein combination. Okay. So, they form a thick matrix on top of uh, the bacteria. So, it delays or impedes the diffusion of antibiotic molecules into the deeper layer of the biofilm. Okay. So, they are more like a physical uh, effect prevention. Then biofilm bacteria, they also activate many genes. So, their surfaces and other molecular targets also change. Okay. So, the antibiotics are not able to go and attach because their surfaces and other molecular targets have changed. Whereas, uh, uh, the matrix, the thick matrix prevents the diffusion of the antibiotic that is that we call it extrinsic resistance, whereas the changes on the surface and we can call it intrinsic resistance. Okay. Now, uh, uh, if you look at it from an engineering point of view, uh, the um, diffusion of antibiotics through the From engineering point of view, um, we can see the antibiotic or nutrient or oxygen diffuses through the biofilm from one end and reaches right up to the bottom. Okay. So, we can here use Fick's first law. You must have studied that long time back in your uh, first year um, undergraduate. What is this Fick's first law? Flux is equal to at steady state flux is equal to minus d that is the diffusion coefficients d c by d x. C is the concentration, x is the distance. So, d c by d x is the concentration gradient, um, j is your flux, d is the diffusion coefficient. Why this minus sign? Uh, concentration of the antibiotic or nutrient could be is higher um, at the, okay, on the surface, whereas the concentration keeps decreasing. So, if you have a constant flux, we can assume this as a linearly decreasing concentration as we go deeper and deeper into the biofilm matrix. So, what does that mean? So, at the surface, if the concentration of the antibiotic is C naught, okay, as we go down, this uh, concentration will be going down linearly and it will keep going down and down. So, at the surface, the concentration could be M i C, whereas uh, if you travel down, it may be coming much lower. Okay. 
and um, d sort of determines the slope of this uh, linear uh, uh, line ok. So, if the d is very poor that means if d is very small, so the fall in concentration as we go along inside could be very very low. That means, um, the concentration inside could be much much lower when compared to the concentration at the surface of the biofilm. Okay. So, this d diffusion coefficient is based on many factors, how thick the biofilm is, um, what is the morphology of the biofilm, how much of exopolysaccharides that are produced. So, the diffusion coefficients can become very, very small. So, when it becomes very small, the concentration inside will be much lower than the concentration that is found on the surface. So, this is a very useful relationship to keep in mind which tells you the mechanism or the reason why there is a huge fall in the concentration of the um, antibiotic as you travel inside this biofilm. Now, this is at steady state, you can also have an unsteady state diffusion ok, where the diffusion flux and the concentration change with time also. So, we need to bring in the factor of time here. So, once we bring in factor of time here, it becomes a partial differential equation delta c by delta t t is your time is equal to d d square c by d x square. So, we are considering only one dimension x. So, if you can have y z you can put in d square c plus d y square d square c by um, d z square and so on actually. So, it will be it is a partial differential equation that is why we put like this whereas, here we put like this ok. This is a uh, ordinary differential equation whereas, this is a partial differential equation. So, the concentration is a function of time as well as the distance um, here it could be just x, um, but you can have x, y, z all the three um, uh, okay, coordinates also. So, here at time equal to 0 c is equal to c naught at x equal to 0 on the surface um, at time equal to 0 uh, concentration in the remaining that means, inside uh, the biofilm will be 0. So, at time equal to 0. Um, concentration inside the biofilm is 0. So, we um, the concentration of the antibiotic or any metabolite at the surface could be C naught ok. So, it, it, this is it is possible to solve this equation also let us not go too much uh, into that and uh, make you worried, but it can be solved and uh, you can have relationship uh, that uh, re describes C as a function of time as well as x ok. Whereas, in the first law um, it is quite simple when we have the constant flux j on the left hand side then this d c by d x looks like a, a linearly decreasing concentration as we move along inside the biofilm ok. Um, now, we can have different situations of the flux uh, and we can have different types of uh, uh, graphical observations. Let us look at it. Suppose, we have fixed surface concentration that is constant amount of antibiotic present on the surface of the biofilm ok, that is fixed surface concentration. So, at the surface of the biofilm the concentration um, of the antibiotics could be this much, but as you go inside the depth concentration may be falling at a particular time T 1. Then as the time keeps going up it may slowly building up like this T 2, T 3 and so on actually like this ok. Um, how fast it uh, increases that depends upon the diffusion coefficient um, and the depth of the biofilm and so on actually. So, if you have constant amount of antibiotic present on the surface that means, the antibiotic is not depleting uh, constant amount. So, at the surface concentration will be so much as you go inside the biofilm the x axis is depth of the biofilm the concentration will fall down like this, um, but as you increase the time it will slowly build up uh, like this that means, T 1 um, T 3 is greater than T 2 greater than T 1. Now, it is mathematically um, represented in this form concentration as a function of x and t C s is the concentration at the surface ok constant surface and this is how it is given the relationship is given like this ok where d is the diffusion coefficient t is the time x is the depth. Now, you can have another situation ok where certain amount of antibiotic is placed on the surface of the biofilm at time equal to 0 that is fixed amount of dopant. That means, uh, the concentration um, at the surface also will decrease because as it keeps diffusing in. So, at very very low time 
the graph will look like this as a function of depth. So, initially at the surface you will have certain concentration as you go inside the concentration will drop dramatically, but, but as time progresses um, the concentration inside may increase, but uh, the concentration at the surface will fall down because we have fixed amount of antibiotic. Okay. So, as time progresses we are going to have like this. Okay. So, at the surface also it will go down um, inside will slightly go up and it is mathematically given by this uh, particular relationship. Okay. So, we have two real types of situations where we have fixed surface concentration that is constant amount of antibiotic present and we could have only some amount of antibiotic is placed on the surface. So, that gets also de uh, depleted as the antibiotic starts diffusing in. So, we have a graph uh, um, as shown like this whereas, in the other case um, the concentration versus uh, distance keeps going up and up with increasing time. So, as you can see from these uh, um, explanation that uh, the antibiotic amount inside the biofilm um, will be much lower than what is present in the surface. So, if the concentration at the surface um, is constant then there could be a slow increase in the antibiotic uh, inside the biofilm also, but if the concentration at the surface uh, is also depleting then uh, we are not going to have a slow increase in antibiotic amount inside the surface. So, the bacteria inside the biofilm are always exposed to very low concentrations of antibiotic which could be below its MIC um, hence bacteria starts acquiring antibiotic resistance. So, this is a, a physical phenomena which is based on the diffusions uh, through uh, air surface and this can be explained both by using uh, the uh, fixed first law as well as fixed second law. Okay. Once more as you can see fixed first law tells you the flux that is on the left hand side is equal to minus d diffusion coefficient d c by d x then c is the concentration x is the distance. Okay. So, it is a linearly decreasing concentration as a function of time if the, if the uh, left hand side is constant. Okay. So, at the surface concentration is high, so it keeps going down, but if you look at the fixed second law um, it brings in time as well into it into the picture. So, we have c the concentration function of time as well as the distance. So, we use partial derivatives here okay. d c by d t is equal to um, diffusion coefficients d square c by d x square. If you have the y uh, axis also then you will have d square c by d y square and if you have z then it will be d square c by d z square. Okay. Um, so, this is the fixed second law which tells you that concentration can vary as a function of uh, distance or as you travel inside the biofilm as well as as a function of time as well. And uh, from these laws we can develop uh, um, certain uh, pictorial visualization of how the antibiotic concentration could be distributed inside the distance um, as a function of distance as well as as a function of time. So, in first situation we have a fixed surface concentration that is constant amount of antibiotic flowing across okay, the biofilm. So, in the, uh, at the surface concentration of the antibiotic could be very high, uh, it falls down dramatically as you go inside the biofilm this is at one particular time as the time increases uh, this graph starts moving up and up and up and up and ultimately uh, the concentration inside could also be very very high. That is when the antibiotic uh, um, amount present on the surface is always constant concentration okay. and this is expressed by this particular mathematical relationship. Whereas, uh, and, okay, uh, whereas, in the other situation uh, we have constant amount of antibiotics placed on the surface and after that we do not replenish the antibiotic. So, uh, it drops dramatically as you go down in distance, but because the antibiotic also starts diffusing the con the concentration of antibiotic at the surface also keeps going down. Okay. So, at one time you will have a graph like this as the time increases the graph may become like this and like this and like this and so on. Okay. So, the antibiotic is of no use as you can see beyond a small distance and with 
as you go travel inside, you have uh, very low concentrations um, which may lead to antibiotic resistance because the bacteria is exposed to uh, sub MIC concentration of the antibiotic. And uh, generally, um, when a patient after uh, implant surgery is given antibiotics, uh, we can assume this type of uh, scenario where initially the surface has large amount of antibiotics and afterwards the surface concentration of antibiotics also keeps going down. So, uh, in the interstices or in the depths, the concentration of antibiotic is below sub MIC. Okay, so, we will continue further on this biofilm and uh, the effect of biofilm uh, on uh, implants. Okay. Thank you very much for your time.